Hey there, Rod the Car Guy here, and today let's talk about my new to me 2020 Ram 2500. This is the crew cab, as you can see, short bed Laramie edition with the Cummins diesel. While passing through Louisiana on our sort of camping adventure, we were towing our um, imagined 17 foot trailer with my Nissan Titan. And that was certainly doing fine, but it was our plan to get a new towing vehicle that's just dedicated to towing the camper. And we ended up with this. Now I'll tell you right off the bat, this certainly isn't going to be a non-biased review. Uh, I bought this truck because I love it. I've always wanted one and now I have it, so I'm super excited. So we'll just talk about some of the features that this particular model and trim came with. And uh, you can determine on your own whether or not you wanna buy one. So right off the bat, we have to talk about price because these things are crazy expensive. In November of 2020, this thing was sold for a whopping $71,000. 70,000 miles and two years later in September of 2022, I paid an embarrassingly high 60,000 for it. Unfortunately, we're still in a time where, for instance, if you want a brand new F-250 or 350, you better get in line right when the order's open, order it, and then wait a year for it to show up. Lack of supply is driving prices of used trucks absolutely to the sky, but I wanted it, I wanted it now, so we decided to pull the trigger. So what do we get for our $60,000 truck in 2022? Well, let's take a look. First of all, you get what, at least in my opinion, is the most attractive heavy duty consumer truck available on the market today. I think Ram is absolutely crushing it with the design. It doesn't look like an absolutely massive truck until you go stand up next to it and uh, my head barely gets past the side mirrors. They're still using kind of a sporty rounded edge, if you will, where most of the big heavy duty trucks nowadays are just one completely sheer front that just kind of looks like a big wall heading towards you. Not every Ram comes with a quarter acre of chrome all over it, but uh, this one did. I don't know if that's part of the Laramie package or something else. I can take a look at the sheet, but I'm not a huge fan of chrome on vehicles, if you know anything about me, but with this color, it actually isn't too bad. They don't put much work into hiding all the sensors. They just sort of protrude uh, all over the front and rear. The camera on the front is a little discreet. The ones on the side are not. They look like little, uh, I don't know, tumors hanging off of the mirrors, but the ones in the rear aren't bad either. Continuing down the side, you have your chrome rims, chrome badges, chrome side rail, and chrome handle trim. Oh yeah, and the entire mirror as well. Thankfully on the rear, you have a painted bumper, but you have your chrome badges and the chrome handle for getting into the tailgate. Inside is where it really begins to shine. The interior reminds me more of my Chrysler 300 than it does of any truck I've ever owned. Everything in here is either a soft touch material, a textured or decorative plastic, or of course leather wrapped. The perforated leather seats have like this uh, sort of Alcantara type uh, trim in it. And of course they have to have the Laramie embroidery on the back. The soft touch materials and the decorative plastics of course follow along to the door panels where you're gonna find a lot of storage in the bottom and middle of the door. Speaking of storage, the center console on this thing is ridiculous. It's convertible style where if you click the top one, you get a little tray, grab the lower one and you can access the big tub down here and then slide your cup holders out of the way and you have a ton of access up here as well. Above that, you have your phone holders where you can slide a phone in and it'll keep this sort of cable tucked away for you. In this storage area, you get a 115 volt like standard outlet, which is really, really cool. And then you get four USB ports and an aux port to interact with your phones. Following up your center console, you're gonna see uh, auxiliary buttons that are gonna kind of de change depending on what model you get. In my case, I have exhaust brake, tow haul mode, and then my front and rear sensors I can turn off. If you opt for the smaller screen, this has the 8.4 inch as opposed to the giant sort of Tesla style tablet you could get in this one. Uh, but if you get the smaller screen, you get dedicated climate control buttons. That of course is gonna have dual climate control as well as heated and cooled seats and heated steering wheel. At the top, you have one more storage bin where you have a classic sort of cigarette lighter power outlet. For storage on the passenger side, you have two glove boxes, one up above and one honestly pretty small one down below. And don't forget, there's also a USB in the center console tray uh, so you can tuck your phone away. The latest Uconnect has been great, honestly. It's done everything that I've wanted it or needed it to do. Of course, if you have an Apple device, you're gonna have CarPlay and Android, you'll have the, um, whatever that's called, Android Auto. A lot of your controls are gonna be repeated. So up here, you're gonna have your heated and cooled seats and heated steering wheel. This does have dedicated nav, so you can use navigation in here if you don't wanna plug in your phone. You can also do all your climate controls up here as well. It has the standard fare for media, AM, FM, it has um, high def radio and then Sirius XM, and you can do USB keys, all that stuff if you want that as well. It has all the Uconnect apps. You can do a Wi-Fi hotspot, assistance, your user guides are in here, which I actually really like. 
you click on your user guide, you can actually go see different aspects of the vehicle and how to use it. So for instance, uh, how to, I don't know, how to do different driving controls. So starting it, how the transmission works, keys. I think that's a lot of fun. You also have Sirius XM Travel Link. You can stay up to date with sports scores, movie listings, that's all fine. But what I really like is weather and fuel prices. So you can have weather warnings come up on here. You can see what it currently is in your area and you can check out fuel prices so you can see just how sad you're gonna be once you get to the pump. And then you can set favorites for all of those things in the favorites menu. You can of course get pretty granular with your settings. Some of the stuff I wanna point out, whether or not you want rain sensing auto wipers, tilting your mirrors in reverse, auto on vented or heated seats. So if it knows that it's cold out, it'll turn on your heated seats for you, kinda of nice. Trailer settings, you can say what type of trailer you're gonna have and whether or not it has brakes, what type of brakes, and then it helps adjust your towing brake controller which is right here. It has a lot of safety settings in here as well. As far as safety is concerned, of course you have your front and rear sensors like we talked about earlier, but it has a bunch of cameras in it to do a full 360 view for backing up, which is really, really cool. And you can choose what camera you want on the other side. You have cross path in the rear, front cross path, front view, and even a cargo view, which is actually kind of dirty right now. One thing I really do like is that this cargo view is available while you're driving. So you can just click the button in your, in your uh, app settings and you can see your cargo. So obviously I have a cover on right now, but if you were carrying some furniture or something, you could see you know, whether or not it was flopping around back there really easily. You also have a split view for left and right. That's right down the side of the truck from the mirror cameras. The center console is pretty customizable. The only hard gauges you have are your fuel, your def, your tack, and your speed. Everything else in here is customizable. So right now you see we have our current mileage in the upper left, average on the side, range on the other side and compass in the upper right. Voltage and fuel pressure are down below. You can click up and down on your steering wheel, get through all your different screens here. Trailer towing, that's pretty nice. Tells you how much the brakes are being applied. So even if you hit your manual trailer brake, you'll see that it's uh, being applied. This will tell you your audio. If you have navigation running in the native navigation, it will show the directions up here messages, and then screen setup. So of course, this is where you go in to change all your different gauges. For instance, if we wanted to change the compass, we can go in and here's some of our options. On the right of the steering wheel, you have your gear limit, which is nice. You can restrict how many gears it goes into. There are your cruise control settings. Over here, you have the screen navigation, what we were just working on, your phone, and then obviously if you wanna to talk to it and give it commands. On the back of this side, we have advancing the track, and on this side, we have volume. On the left side of the column, you'll find the button to adjust the pedals, either forward or backward. Overhead, you'll find home link, and in the center, you have a button to drop your tailgate, turn off your door sensors, turn on lights, SOS, assist, and then opening and closing the rear window. And then, of course, you have the place for your sunglasses, right? As far as 4x4 is concerned, controls are nice and easy next to your trailer brake. You, of course, have neutral, two-wheel drive, four high, and four low. Nothing really special there. The rear is crazy spacious. I have probably about 10, eight to 10 inches in front of my knees before I hit the front seat. If the front drivers aren't using the rear cup holders in the center console, there's six cup holders available uh, to the rear passengers and even more if you wanna put stuff in the door. There's another four USB back here for charging as well as another 115 volt standard house outlet as well as an armrest, which is really nice. There's some dedicated vents back here for the passengers. And uh, this, I don't know if this was uh, came with it, but there's a nice uh, all-weather mat in here. All, all the way around, there's all-weather mats that are form-fitted and snap into place, which are super great. Underneath these floor mats, if you lift them up, they have a little secret compartment. They have it on both sides. You just lift up the mat, and then you can just flip it open. They have like little aftermarket kits too. I've already shopped for these, where you can create a little locking cabinet out of those, which is kind of a fun idea. If you flip these seats up, they have some uh, sort of lay flat cargo area. So you just have to drop the supports, flip them over, and then you have one giant uh, platform back here to set whatever you want on it. There's storage under that compartment as well. And if you have the sound system with the subwoofer, that will take up the other side. Modern diesels are pretty easy to drive. If it needs time to warm up, it would just literally sit here and say, warming up, waiting to start, and then it would start once it's warm enough. The only other thing you really need to worry about with this particular diesel is it's turbo. You want it to cool down after you've driven it. You're never going to escape the fact that this is a diesel. You're still gonna hear it, but Dodge does employ active noise cancellation, which is pretty cool. So when you're on the highway, this thing's actually really quiet. It's got a nice low hum, but uh, it certainly doesn't feel like you're in a big diesel. 
pretty darn quiet for a giant truck. I think I hear tires and wind more than I hear the engine. I'm in Texas, by the way, so that's okay. The suspension, however, does let you know that you are in a heavy duty truck. This thing is very bouncy, especially over uneven roads or of course, dirt roads. The standard bed is pretty unremarkable. I mean, it's fine. It had a bed liner in it. Uh, there's a couple cargo lights, which are pretty nice. You can click those on right from the side of the bed if you wanted to. And the tailgate is electronic. That means that you can open it with the key fob, which is kind of fun and could be convenient if you are backing up to a fifth wheel. And that leads me to towing. Thanks to the 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel, which is actually an inline six cylinder, kind of surprisingly enough, putting out 370 horsepower and 850 foot pounds of torque. This thing can tow quite a bit of weight. Dodge says it maxes out at around 19,000 pounds. And of course that's gonna be like with a gooseneck or fifth wheel, that's certainly not gonna be on the standard receiver. Speaking of the receiver, if you are coming from a uh, regular truck, if you will, or a standard duty truck, uh, this is gonna be a two and a half inch receiver, not a two inch. So that is something to consider when moving up to a truck like this. And of course it's gonna have your seven pin and your four pin right in the bumper. We're currently towing our camper there. That's a little tiny camper. I think that maxes out at 6,000 pounds. I know that seems like overkill, but with proper weight distribution and anti-sway, with this much torque, it really feels like there's nothing behind it when you have a trailer that small. For towing, the mirrors are pretty great. You have a blind spot mirror and your standard mirror, and then you can actually flip it up for tow mode. So check this out. There you go, tow mode activated. It's nice because when you're not towing, you don't wanna have these giant funky mirrors on it. You can flip it down and it looks like a normal truck. So it's attractive. It is far overpowered for what I need it for. And uh, it's a luxurious enough that it doesn't make me miss the Chrysler 300 that I gave up to get this. Although I may have overpaid for it, honestly, I think it's worth every penny. If you like this video, guys, please scroll down, click that like button, subscribe for more content like this, and we'll see you in the next one.